Hello gamers, Mike the Zorch here, and today I we're going to be watching a trailer for a game that uh, some people didn't know about, and some people n know something about it, but what they've heard about it is completely bullshit. Complete bullshit. This is Squadron 42. I'm a backer of Star Citizen. Star Citizen is connected with Squadron 42. I'll explain that connection in just a moment, but um, yeah, if you hear people saying that this is a scam or Star Citizen is a scam, don't listen to them. It's bullshit. They have no idea what they're talking about. If you want to know, listen to people like me, listen to other backers, or go to channels like Board Gamer or um, Eradicator, go to them and listen to what they have to say. But if you hear people saying that this is a scam, it's complete bullshit, treat it as bullshit, and move on. And you're about to hear the truth from me on what this is. Squadron 42 is the game that Chris Roberts originally pitched back in 2011. This is the game that he promised. This has been the focus of the development and all the crowdfunding money that has gone into the, the gone into the project has been focused on this game. It's a single player space game that of uh, unprecedented un unprecedented levels of detail and 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 everything in it. It's amazing and it's got an all-star cast. It's got Mark Hamill in it. It's got John Reese Davies. It's got Andy Serkis. It's got uh, Gary Oldman, Ian Cunningham, Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill's in it. Gillian Anderson is in it. Um, Henry uh, Henry Cavill. Uh, I think I said Henry Cavill already. Yeah, Henry Cavill's in it. He's in it too. So it's an all-star cast uh, for the, Ian Cunningham. He's from Game of Thrones. You know, so this is this has got uh, this has got quite the cast in it, and it's a single-player narrative. Uh, the story, uh, lore-wise, it takes place. Uh, several years before uh, everything that happens in Star Citizen. Star Citizen is sort of the aftermath of, of the events that happen here. And this is just the first chapter. This is just, just part one. The first, first in a trilogy of games that uh, Cloud Imperium Games is going to make. Now, Star Citizen was originally a, 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 a social multiplayer add-on for Squadron 42. It was going to be much smaller in scope than what it is today. Now, it was not Cloud Imperium Games that expanded the scope of Star Citizen. It was the backers who, who asked them to do it. Before I became a backer, there was a vote. A vote to expand the scope of the multiplayer side of the game. And so, that's what, uh, that's what Cloud Imperium Games has been doing. Now, development's been slow because this game, Squadron 42, has been taking the bulk of the resources. Bulk, most of the developers at Cloud Imperium Games have been working on this game. And that's changed now that it is feature complete. And feature complete means that everything that they're going to add to the game has been added. Everything that they're going to add to the game has been added. And so now they just have to polish. They don't need as big a team to polish the game and optimize it for the range of hardware that they're targeting this to run on. All those devs, which are somewhere around maybe, a, I think, 700 of them, they, they have like a thousand something. Um, 1,000 or 2,000 employees or something around there. I know they've been hiring, and they're still they're still hiring for positions. But they were at 700 employees at one time, and then they increased to like 1,000. Uh, I want to say 1,500, 1,500. I want to say, but but most of those have now been moved over to Star Citizen development. And all the features in Squadron 42, the new UI. The new flight model, the master modes, the uh, improved 
uh, character AI, NPC AI, the audio, the improved audio, all of that, improved graphics, all that's being moved over into uh, Star Citizen. It's going to take place over time. The other part of Star Citizen is back-end tech. And what the, the key tech there that it needs is persistence, which is in the game now and working, and server meshing, which has been demonstrated as functional. So server meshing has been demonstrated uh, live at CitizenCon as fully functional. They've got it working where they took a room and they divided it up among three servers and they were able to have a firefight between different players or, or player and NPCs across multiple servers in real time within a single room. No one has ever been able to do that. No one's been able to do that and be able to cross between servers through a single room seamlessly be able to hand off from one server to another in, in, a, in a live environment instantaneously. No one's been able to do that. I, mean, um, I know that Second Life tries, but there is like a, 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 a brief pause as you hand off from one server to another as you're moving throughout their big open world area. But this, there's no pause. They've also demonstrated uh, how a server can crash and then they can bring it back up and the game can recover without you disconnecting. That's another thing. But this this game I'm about to show you doesn't require that because it's a single player game. Star Citizen is the multiplayer game that has that after the vote, the scope has been expanded to make it an MMO of unprecedented size and detail. Anyway, let's watch this trailer and uh, I'll make some comments throughout it. Most of this takes place in what is called the Odin system. <laughs> Okay, these ships yeah, yeah. are in Star Citizen right now. Like these were some of the first Quick. fighters that were added Marshall to the game. The okay, this is the Vega system. This is sort of the beginning of... Copy that. There's a narrative here where there's a big battle that takes place with an alien Logic. race here. Logic. And this it sort scary. of has a big Come impact on the UEE. Redirect to sector 7 Bravo Echo for immediate tasking. Copy that. On our way. We have gas clouds like that in Star Citizen and Asteroids. This soundtrack and stuff right here just gives me Battlestar Galactica vibes like no <laughs> totally gives me Battlestar Galactica vibes. That's a Bengal character. Uh, Bengal carrier. I saw that in Star Citizen and Invictus Week. That thing is massive. And this is a javelin destroyer. Now, they, have, they offer tours of these in Star Citizen when they dock at space stations during Invictus. That's a big ship too. I know I just wrote you, but a couple of hours ago proximity sensors on, on the other side, side of the jump got twigged. They're shifting characters be because they're showing you this is the player character and you can you can be I guess that last fight didn't scare them off quite like the male. 
or whatever you want. They have, a, Honestly, they have an extensive character career. I've been out here so long, I don't know what to pull for anymore. I just... I just wanted That's to let you That's the know. military Moby Glass. All right, as soon as I can. Stay safe. Your loving son. All of this is all motion and performance capture. They have their own studio for it. Julian Anderson. Never gets old, does it? Sir. It is. I used to do the same thing when I was first coming up. Post up to the flight deck whenever I could to watch the launches. Have you seen the F-8s up close? No, sir. The thing's a beast. Nimble, too. Twelve maneuvering thrusters and three mains, it sure sounds like it. <laughs> sir. Yeah, the F-8s... The F-8s are the, game, are the ships that you will get for Star Citizen when you complete this. Some people have gotten it early because of a contest. I saw you apply to the Flight Academy again. Yes, sir. Keep your head up. Took me a couple times before I got in. Thank you, sir. They did record this live. It's been some time. Welcome to Cloud Imperium Games Manchester Studio. I'm Chris Roberts, and I'm pleased to announce we have just passed the major milestone. Squadron 42 is now feature complete and has entered its polish phase. Yep. To celebrate this milestone, we've gathered some of our core leadership together to share what this means. And they're going to take their time with polish. They're not going to rush like all but many other AAA studios have done. As Chris says, we've moved into the polish phase of Squadron 42, which means extra emphasis on ensuring things feel fun. Unlike other studios, we This means focusing on the broken. small and large elements of the game, such as dialing in combat encounters, but also looking at the feel of how you control your character or vehicle and making sure it's immersive as possible. We've paid extra attention to how your character reacts when in their ship, so that you feel like an actual pilot whether that's firing your weapons, taking hits, or punching the afterburners to get to cover. I've seen how master mode Ship AI has it's also a seen like huge improvements dangerous with closer like engagement model. distances and more varied behaviors. And with our new precision targeting mode, the action has never been as close. You can try it out in Arena Commander in uh, Star Citizen. Arena Commander mode. With the aim now on polish, we've organized the project into self-sufficient strike teams so we can focus on individual boat. areas to deliver the best experience. Their water tech is really impressive. Get out of sight. The cops is going to spot you. This allows us to bring all disciplines together with a unified vision of enhancing the gameplay by seamlessly blending it with polished Cutlass visuals, black. final cinematic performances, and our ever-improving technology. The thruster, the, 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 the thrust affected the water. You didn't see the boat, kid. You're good to keep going. That damn big cutlass black that blew over it. Pretty sizable ship. That damn We're also massive. dialing in gameplay features, such as the ship flight model, for both atmosphere and space, which covers master modes, control surfaces, and our gold standard HUD and MFDs. This reminds me of that part from... Uh, our interaction system for both the world from, and your uh, character Gun Maverick. have also seen additional improvements, through that allowing us to hone and AA. craft environmental puzzles unique to each location, while allowing us to tell the story of the world around you.
That was the military multi-tool. It has multiple functions, whereas the civilian one, you have to change modules. The military multi-tool is an essential piece of equipment for every pilot that integrates all attachments into a single handheld device that would and allows nice us to, to create really interesting challenges, including physics-based puzzles using our updated rope tech. Unidentified vessels, this is the UEE Navy. Power and now this is the Odin for process in the coil. Our scanning, targeting and marker system has also seen an overhaul, allowing us to highlight only the essential information that you need, such as key objectives, mission targets and high-level scan information, ah, while keeping your black. overall view as clean as possible. That skank! That's the Buccaneer. Bye bye. Tactical FPS combat and stealth, which has seen a suite of improvements from improved like looting, UI. weapon feel and balance, this is realistic the new scopes, UI that we're getting. and smoother locomotion, alongside our new and improved FPS radar and scanner that provide you an overview of the battlefield, but at the cost of ramp environments. Missions. We've also seen the introduction of our Maelstrom powered destructible environment, which adds a layer of dynamism to the experience alongside our improved AI that can now have hundreds of combinations of traits that allow us to create unique and challenging combat encounters that really push your tactical awareness and skill. We play and review the builds regularly and call yeah, action the, points in each level from start the, to that's finish the and where we need to improve for, the gameplay. Um, hole scraping, which we have. This is an incredibly rewarding stage of development for me and the team, movement. as the ultimate vision of the game is realized, allowing us to craft an experience that we can be really proud of. One specific area that I'm excited to dial in is the feeling of the player interacting with the world around them. Patching you in. As it's a core component of Squadron and really grounds the world that you inhabit. We've made sure that any interaction in the environment is physically represented uh, by a character animation uh, to keep you in the moment and fully system. immerse you in the experience that we've created. Ultimately, this is the final phase of gameplay iteration. This is the fully transition into travel, optimization the, and stability. Um, the new on the trailer road engine to release. The, uh, the Star Engine trailer has the new Skull, effect. Come back. I like the new quantum effect. Like this. Web tried explaining how atmosphere processors work. It really shows how far we've come. What the hell is she? With the transition of Squadron to Polish Phase, we've had the opportunity to find additional moments within the existing narrative to add subtle interactions where appropriate. Now they built it's this been tremendously exciting thing, to play through these areas and find places to augment motion the motion and perform gameplay and studio. further embellish our story. This and characters. was a huge yeah, man, investment. I, I, I can't That's believe it. They said I've got technology. to wait another two years before I can reapply. So, um, so that's why I figured I'd get a job trying trying in security because that's. Um, you know, I can get some hours flying in the cockpit and whatnot. Can't hurt, right? Yeah. Exactly.
We've also been capturing pickups for our lead female player character, as well as wild lines for our various enemies that you all will encounter throughout the game on both foot and in your cockpit. These consist of a range of responses and reactions that you as the player can trigger, which has been the culmination of efforts by the gameplay and AI teams. This means that you're gonna have to tangle with some very smart and reactive bad guys to complete your mission. I like the design of this, uh, this Cutlass Black. The engines in the, the engine uh, pods are very different on this one. I hope that we are able to customize it later. At the heart of this immersive adventure, you'll find that cutting edge a cinematic ship. storytelling thoughtfully crafted to fully immerse you into your story. We fight today. Gary Oldman. So in 40 years from now, when you're surrounded by everything and everyone you hold dear, and they ask, what did you do in the Battle of Vega? You can look them in the eye Hard and to imagine say, this was Zorg from the I held the line. Men and women of the Second Fleet, I am proud to stand with you today. Good luck. Push your butt. Nice speech. I'm not familiar with him. Any word from the recon team? Not yet. Well, let's get into position. Throughout the polish phase, our team is taking every opportunity to push things Davies? to the next level. Tell me you're expecting and company. Mark Hamill. This is not good. The Cine team is focused on finalizing edit lock on all of our big action as well as all smaller character sequences. I could have pulled this off of the Galactopedia. Yeah, probably, but I think their solar mass calculations are wrong though. Uh, that's the well, graphical enhancements that they were How showing so? off at Citizen. We are now Con. able to adjust our shot composition to final cameras thanks to recently crafted space whisters and level art being content complete now. It'd be nice to know how much of a shitstorm we're flying into. Definitely like looks a better blue, than, uh, you ain't gonna fly than Starfield. Out of. Shut up! Now, I hadn't seen another ship that wasn't trying to kill me in days, let alone a hauler, let alone a Jean. So you can imagine my surprise. Detailed lighting passes can be done on hero sequences so we can show our cast and convey their emotions in the best light possible. And we're making sure our cinematics are triggering as fluid as we can craft them so they form a coherent concerto with the rest of the player's narrative experience. Mr. Wexler, this is Lieutenant Commander Colton. Oh. Commander and Mendelssohn, Julian Orson Orson I'm the field manager from, of this little uh, operation. From Rogue One. the Archon. What brings the Navy to this little corner of the universe? We got you flying with Lieutenant Commander Ian Colton. Cunningham. He's one of our best. From, uh, Game as others will share. This is the most rewarding chapter of development, which allows us her. to truly experience the, the visceral was an and oftentimes an emotional moments that our narrative an provides. I an actress, but I don't recognize her. How did you handle it after Vega? That is so much better. That, that just blows I'm Starfield sure out of the water anything. with its visuals. This character it helps to remember so that better. stuff like this is supposed to hurt. The before was more like what Starfield never looks been like. Good at this, with this, no. I can't fix. Modders could make Starfield look like well, this. This is one that but you don't have course, to do alone. That's Bethesda waiting for the modders to do their work. That's good to know. Fixing what they should have had when they launched the game. For the way. animation teams, polish phase means refining the social aspects of Squadron 42 that occur between the various missions and getting the behaviors implemented across all of its chapters. Here we're dialing in the hangar to make it as immersive and believable an experience as possible. That'll do it. Oh, done. Okay. Right. Let's do this. That pose is using their rope tech. For example, we're launching off a space carrier 
but we still ground the feel in real world actions, refueling, repairing, and inspecting, and making sure that your next flight mission is a success. This means we're looking out for pops, hiccups, or awkward transitions and ensuring that everything flows and looks like all the great mocap performances we've captured. All the things most AAA studios don't do. Let's ready and, some and extra this, ice this, packs this, this and small Whenever gunners are on full NPC rotation, interaction you can here. Count on at least one of them getting They hurt. put so much detail into it. We also have you covered in everyday life. The, the medical little staff things. work diligently the for their patients. The little patients, things whether all their players come or together and, and just add up and improve upon the immersion. We really want you to Even feel part of an authentic crew, the an important part of the UEE Navy, and an enormous that universe anymore. of people going about their everyday lives. Let's go ahead and clear for takeoff. Ground crew, prep bay for takeoff. Copy that. Hangar, ready for launch. Take off approved, Baron 2. You have the ball. Now, I think they're holding the ship up with a tractor beam here. I'm not sure how they're holding it up. He's going to throttle up. We're ready and hold on as you're launched off the deck of the carrier. Baron 2, you are cleared for launch. Have a safe flight, Baron 2. Doing it just like a military carrier launch. We want you to not only decide Navy, how Navy you play the game, launch. but to feel as if the people you interact with are in that world with you. Now this here, people have, have commented that this guy is not so doing pretty. proper gun safety. as hell. He was pointing like the barrel at a lot of other weapons you, in Gemini's arsenal? There's a higher rate of fire than most guns of Especially its people who served in the military said they would never do that. We're working to support a feel of authenticity through world traversals, running, jumping, and climbing, interactions with objects and the environment. That's a nice starfarer. That's a... That's a tanker ship. Solid weapon gameplay and enemy reactions. As well as combat realities, such as weapon malfunctions. We don't have that in Star Citizen yet, but that's going to be coming, because we don't have weapon degradation. Or in close encounters of the more not yet. lethal kind. <laughs> Ooh, that's gonna hurt in That's one of the things they'll need to polish. As I looked at this part here and I just immediately experience. thought aliens. We've been working closely with our art teams. Aliens. And it's been exciting to see their environments come to life alongside That us. looks good. While animation and design have been populating the locations, polished phase for my teams means making huge advancements in the quality of our characters and environments. We've established our standard with recognizable characters like Mark Hamill, Julian Anderson, and Gary Oldman. And we're now applying this to the rest of the cast and identifying any remaining tech requirements that need to be closed out. Mm -hmm. The story of Squadron 42 takes now you through this, a variety of diverse amazing. locations of varying scales and at. styles. We shared glimpses of several environments before, and there's still plenty out there for you to discover. One of the main challenges the art team has had to face during the development of Squadron 42 is ensuring the visuals that an are complementary to the narrative of the script. The mood and feeling of a space is I'm just as important that to shit. us That's as it is new. making sure we hit the visual quality that CIG has become known for. No oh, good, we can't hack it from this side. Graves, we've got a locked door. Can you give us access? No, I'm afraid that's a negative, Steve. Uh, I would have to add you to our system to give you override permissions, and uh, yeah, there's a lot involved in that. It won't happen quickly. Okay, we'll figure something out. Hmm. 
Everything you see during the campaign has been heavily inspired the by the classics of 70s and 80s sci-fi, but with a modern twist. We want everything you see to this feel like it has like a something soul, out of it, its right. own personality, and tells of a history this long is before you arrived. Is. Here's the coil. This, this part is looks awesome. Crafting looked awesome with the original spaces, trailer and their connecting the coil, tissue really has been one of the more together. unique challenges we've needed to overcome for Squadron. Developing our VDB tech to blend seamlessly between tighter traversal spaces and into wider space vistas and planets has proved incredibly difficult but rewarding, ensuring that Squadron flows seamlessly from one chapter to the next without interruption. Creating a diverse array of locations is essential to us. Our environments need to work from a variety of scales. We need to pay close attention to detail, whether we're working in a dirty engineering vent or navigating the debris of a dying star, wondering what may be that's around that next corner, or like. even who may live there, but that's not how would they have survived, and what state of mind may they be in. Now, I'm expecting at some point we're going to get that. That's using the new. Um, let me go back. I haven't. I know I haven't paused it any time in the game. In the in the uh, play, that new map. The new map here. Uh, that's part of the new Moby Glass map that we're going to be getting. Uh, they've they're utilizing this here. Now the Carrick has this in it on the Astrometrics deck. So at some point, this the space holder um, effect that they have here is going to be replaced by this, because this is going to be where you can chart uh, jumps and and everything in the Carrick. Because the Carrick is a exploration vessel. It's a pathfinder. We have one in the game. This is the bridge of the Idris. The Idris has been has We've been worked closely in, with our social teams in delivering uh, a cohesive social experience. A few times we taking some downtime threat. from our refined flight and FPS missions. Uh, at missions. Or even missions of the more eerie kind. This is a freelancer. I don't think it's a freelancer max, but this is definitely a freelancer. Those pod doors are closed. There's originally bunk beds, but they do serve as escape pods. We'll be introducing new space stations a on a massive scale, station. all brought together and designed to be as tangible as possible. We've thought about their function, their age, and tried to ensure there's a progression in artistic style with each station as you progress through the game. There are escalators in space. And that big Benny's bar. As you can see today, the teams are working incredibly hard, ramping up the detail and quality to match the breadth of our vision for Squadron 42. Oh, yeah. This now, I know you're all asking, so when can I play it? Starfield. When can I play it? Jerry. When we have the locked release date, you will be the first to know. Now, we're in polishing phase on Squadron 42. You will start to see a lot more things coming to Star Citizen, yep. as well as overall it's already progress starting, on the universe. You're already starting to see Polish a lot of stuff Polish phase can take some time. To Star we have come this far, and we want to make sure Squadron 42 delivers on the promise of being this generation's Wing Commander. Now, even though there's only a few of us in this video, I'd like to extend a big thank you to all our staff around the globe who have been putting their heart and soul into bringing Squadron 42 to life. And I would like to thank everyone in the community for your patience and your support. Mm -hmm. To paraphrase Admiral Bishop, when people ask, what did you do in the development squadron 42? You can look them in the eye and say, I held the line. I'm proud to stand with you. Thank you for making this game with us. Oh, this, this is a boarding tube. This is how they get inside. The alien races. Vanduul. Alright. And that is the 
That was the trailer for Squadron 42. And this is just a completely 180 difference from um, from Starfield, visual wise. No loading screens whatsoever. It's just like just like Star Citizen. There's going to be no loading screens. You're going to transition from one chapter of the game to the next, one area of the game to the next, just moving throughout the game, and there won't be a single loading screen. There will be, uh, you'll be able to transition from space to ground without any loading screens anywhere, and or f or fast travel. You want to get some place, get in your ship and fly there. You know, it, 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 it's completely different and. And for as long as uh, this has been in development, Starfield's been in development for the same amount of time. Bethesda says it's been taking 20 years. So they had plenty of time to put that into the game. So you don't have to have all this, you know, it, it basically, all Starfield really is, is the, out, is the outer worlds with space combat. That's it. It's the outer worlds with space combat. It's the same, you know, to, to land, you choose a landing spot, you get a cutscene. I mean, now the, the outer worlds doesn't even have that. You just, you just land and you get out of the ship. No. It's just completely night and day, completely different. And it's been the same amount of time of, of development. And they just didn't take the time to do it, or, or if, or their engine. What's more likely is both. They didn't take the time to do it, and their engine couldn't do it. The engine that they stuck with couldn't do it, and and they stuck with an engine that is just ancient. Whereas CIG, most of their time, most of the time that they've been taking, they've been taking an older cry engine and completely retooling it completely rewriting it for their own needs so that now it's completely new engine it's completely different from the engine that they originally started with uh, they were using crytech they were using that and then they went over to lumberyard which is a fork of crytech from uh, amazon which is the same engine that uh, they're using for New World. And they've completely rewritten that. The whole rendering pipeline is completely different now. So basically, it's, a, it's practically a new engine. Except for some minor, minor parts. The audio subsystem and graphic subsystem are not the same. And those, that's the heart of the engine. They've completely ripped all that out and replaced it. So, um, it's a completely new engine, and that's what Star Citizen is running on, that's what this is running on, and it is just, just blows Starfield away. Just completely blows it away. I know, I know Starfield's an RPG, and this is an action game, but still, Starfield could have been more like this. Starfield could have, these visuals... It should have had these visuals. Starfield, Starfield should have had these visuals. Starfield should have had seamless transitions from ground to space. The the truly innovative stuff that Bethesda was trying to make us believe that they had in in Starfield would have been there, and ultimately wasn't. It's there's nothing really innovative about Starfield, but this this is different this is this is the wing commander of our generation wing commander was a big deal back in the day and now this this is this is going to completely change things and and it's it's making a lot of uh triple a studios scared i mean they were scared of Baldur's gate 3 wait until this launches if you if you if you thought they're screaming, oh, they, you you can't make this the new standard. They spent 10, 11 years working on this. You can't make this the new standard. 
Like, dude, you, you can't do that. Well, yes, you can. You can make this the new standard because, you know, your, 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 your game studios that make billions of dollars, you made seven billion in the amount of time that Star Citizen has been in development, EA made seven billion dollars just off of the Madden franchise alone. The amount of money that Squadron, that Star Citizen has made through um, crowdfunding, 500 million, you, EA makes that in a day and more. They have massive profits, massive budgets, and the crap that they spit out is just completely overshadowed by this, by a company that is, that has, that's technically understaffed, that has a smaller staff than your typical AAA studio, has a smaller, more limited budget than your basic AAA studio. And they were building two games, an MMO and a single player game of, with, of amazing levels of detail. And they have an all-star cast. There's a big difference here. There's a big difference here. This should be something that EA should have been able to do. This is something that Activision and Ubisoft should have been able to do. But they can't pull this off. They can't. They're not able to. They're not able to because of the way that they operate. CIG, the money that they bring in from crowdfunding, every bit of that goes towards development. Every bit of it goes towards development. Where does the seven billion that EA made off of Madden. Where did heck, where did that go? It certainly didn't go into the Madden games because those are awful and they're getting getting consistently worse every every new release. Definitely didn't go into Battlefield. Battlefield's been getting worse with every new release. So what's going on? It certainly didn't help Anthem. I beta tested Anthem. Anthem had loads of potential. And it was an awful game. It was just just lazy development. And this small company, a relatively small company by AAA standards, with a very limited budget by AAA standards, is just completely outclassing a game from a major AAA studio. There's something wrong there. There's something majorly wrong that an indie studio is able to outclass. This has happened twice. This is happening twice. That an indie studio is outclassing, that two indie studios are outclassing major AAA studios. There's something seriously wrong in the AAA space. If two indie studios are able to outclass completely embarrass AAA Studios. Anyway, I've been Mike DeSorge. I've been rambling on enough. That was the Squadron 42 trailer. This game's going to be just... A, when this comes out, and they've taken the time to polish it and optimize it and get it working right, and it launches with very few bugs, it's going to blow people away. And it's going to make... If you, if you, if you thought that the AAA devs were screaming about Baldur's Gate 3, which is a fantastic game, by the way. If you thought they were screaming, just wait until this comes out. Just wait. And you know what? I'm going to be there, and I'm going to tell you, I told you so. They're going to scream about it. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.